doing a little bit of hybrid, so we're going to answer questions in the room first. And if we have time, we'll answer questions and we'll finish up. So you get to go. Yeah. All right, Ruth, go ahead. Just the excitement of coming away with the win that you guys did, and maybe individually for you, the performance that you were able to put on. Just your thoughts on all that. Uh, it was a great collective win that we put on. And it wasn't just me that like had a great game. There was a lot of other individuals that had a great game, like Kyle, Clarence, the whole D line. But like it was just a great collective win, even on the offensive side, just pulling out that win. All right, you mentioned Kyle. I imagine you probably didn't have a good view, but did you have any clue what happened on his second interception? I actually saw him from I saw like the whole thing. I wasn't watching him the whole time. I was watching my position. And I just see him screaming across the field from like right from the near hash all the way to the ball. But that was crazy. He covers so much now. I was just saying he's like Superman out there. What does it say when you see him make a play like that? You know, as a teammate, I imagine you're like, well, I, I can never do anything like that. Like, what, what, what's that reaction when you see something like that? First thing I said is he's like Superman, and I'm great that he's on our team. It's just, it's just like wonderful that he's on our team to make those plays for us to get the ball right back to the offense. Obviously, defensively, Coach Kelly has said you guys have uh, a lot of work to do to clean up some things. Just what's the mindset of, of, of the defense right now, where you guys are at in, in terms of just getting back um, to, to the level of play you guys believe you should be at? We're just moving forward from we're just moving forward from Florida State right now. We're just focusing on Toledo and just trying to dominate Toledo right now. Isaiah, with this defensive scheme with Marcus Freeman, what's the potential of Montana Boston? Potential is very high. I can cover now. I do a lot more covering, and I rush a lot. I'm on third down, so I always have my opportunities to rush the quarterback. But the potential for me is very high. If I can show my versatility in coverage and in rushing. With the ski on Sunday night, what did you see? What enabled you to do some of the things that you might not have done? It was just a repetition from practice, playing linebacker and then going out in the coverage. But I was a mid playing middle linebacker, and – just like all that repetition just made the game pretty slow for me. So I was just able to make the plays and everyone fit in up. And then the ball just happened to be in my gas. I just made a play. And what was it like to play in that environment, especially after the good crowds? That was amazing. It was a great environment with the Florida State chop. And every time they made a play, they go crazy. But every time we made a play, it's just, cra it's just nice to hear them all silent right now. But it was just a great feeling. What are you guys working on slash be ready, you know, just be ready for, for, for Toledo this week and, and, and the future as defense, just to take that next step up. We have the same mindset. Like I said before, we're just ready to dominate every game. And that's what we came in at Florida State, just to dominate. That's what we're coming in Toledo, just to dominate the games. So we have the same mindset. We're doing the same stuff, but we're just doing it even better right now. What do you see from Toledo's offense? I see they have a decent line. They have a pretty good left tackle. So that's, I wouldn't say a challenge, but it's going to be something that we're looking forward to. I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking forward to go against him, and so is Myron and all the people, other defensive ends, whoever lines up against him. Any other questions in the room? All right, you're good, Isaiah. Just head up to Robbie upstairs. Thank, Thank you, Isaiah. Cool. All right, same setup as a few weeks ago. Yep. Two questions in the room, and we've got questions on Zoom. We'll answer that. So, room, go right ahead. Sounds good. Jonathan, a couple of weeks ago, we talked to you about the ritual and picking the old goal. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's it like pressure. Kicking that field. Yeah. Well, the ritual doesn't change. Um, I think in those moments, I really try to focus on my eyes a lot more. Make sure I'm focused on my eyes and not wander too much, especially in a, uh, in, you know, an environment like that. You know, if I can stay focused on, you know, where I'm trying to hit the ball, you know, seeing the ball well, um, it makes those moments a lot. They, they, they slow down a little bit for you. What was it like? I mean, I can't really remember. You know, Clay, so I kind of, you kind of black out in those moments. Um, just kind of leading up to it, though, you know, I felt pretty calm and confident. I kind of knew, you know, once we got the ball back, I kind of knew what was going to happen, you know, the situation I was going to be in. So it was really just kind of staying calm, not overthinking it, you know, reminding myself of the fundamentals and just kind of let it happen. In what sense? Like, handle it like... I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of why I do what I do. I don't really look at it as pressure. You know, it makes me feel alive. You know, 12 times a year I get to go do something. That, 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 you know, makes my blood flow a little bit, that makes me a little anxious, that makes me a little nervous, you know, that I don't get to feel. Um, you know, when I'm done playing football, I'm not really going to feel that ever again. And that's kind of why I like to do it. it. It asks a lot of me, but it, it's, it's different. And I kind of enjoy that because there's nothing really that I – don't, I don't feel that anywhere else. But, but those moments, you, you know, you feel different, you know. 
you get a little bit more adrenaline, you feel a little more alive. And, and that's why I kind of, that's why I started, that's kind of why I decided to kick. And that's kind of why I want, you know, I wanted to play Notre Dame and play in big games like that. Cause you know, you get a feeling that you don't really get to feel anywhere else in life. How did you kind of silence all the craziness Focus on well, simply, I didn't see it. That's that's kind of why, like, I talk about, you know, keeping my eyes focused, focus my gaze on, you know, where I want the ball to go and just seeing the ball. Um, if I don't see it, it's just white noise, you know, and and I didn't, I didn't really, you know, the crowd, I mean, they're making noise, but I didn't see any of them, you know, I just heard them. And, and like I said, you kind of black out in those moments. So in some sense, it's, it's, it's just, it's kind of quiet almost, you know. After Florida State kicks their field goal, is that when I kind of that okay they just need to get me in a position that I can do this yeah yeah the game it kind of slowed down for me after that I knew it was going to happen um and, and it was just kind of getting myself first and second out just kind of get myself ready to go just kind of visualizing what that was what that moment was going to look like and you know just seeing the ball go through and make sure I was seeing the ball when Jay put it down and you know by third down I felt pretty calm calm and uh comfortable what was going to happen when did you realize it was good when I saw it in the air like pretty I mean I felt like I hit it pretty well and then I saw it, and I there was no wind or anything like that. I didn't, you know, there was nothing that was going to affect the ball once it was in the air. So you got mopped pretty quickly. Did you even actually see it go through? No, I didn't see it go through. <laughs> no, not even close. I, I barely, I have like a fanning in the ball. It was, it, was, it was pretty quick. You like kicking from the right hash? I feel like I've gotten a lot better from the right hash. You asked Coach Bowling, it used to give me a lot of problems when I was younger. I feel like I've gotten a little better. I've given myself some space. John Carney actually came, you know, he came for graduation, and I got to work with him a little bit. And um, he, he had, some, he had some, some words of wisdom about the right hash. So I feel pretty comfortable on either hash. What was the reaction post-game from my family and friends? Going yeah, it was great to hear from a lot of people. Um, you know, people that I hadn't heard from in a while that were still kind of part of my journey, you know, you know being here and just kind of throughout my life. So it was great to get to, to hear from them again and kind of reconnect from them. And it's, just, it's cool to see that they're watching. Uh, thoughts on the Hill Road uh, Glad to be back. Glad to be back with fans. Glad, you know, happy the walk is back. You know, get to see some of my friends who come back in town to visit. So I, I, I'm very excited to be back at home. It'll be fun. Fans, the... Well, home is a little different, you know. Home, the home fans are a little different. You know, they're on my side. You know, they're on our side. So it's a little different than being on the road. Um, and I'm using, you know, the traditions and all that stuff. You know, the fourth quarter, don't drink and drive announcements always for money. You know, things like that. You know, I try to enjoy the home atmosphere a little bit. Uh, we have time for one, uh, we have two questions on Zoom. Darren Pritchett, you are up first. Go right ahead. Great. Thank you very much. Hey, Jonathan, I'm curious. Two-part question. Huh? Number one, is Notre Dame Stadium an easy stadium to kick in? I ask that because it seems like at times the flags, depending on which one you look at, are going in different directions. So I'm wondering, uh, what flags do you look at before you go out for the kick? That's a great question. That, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so if I'm kicking off, I tend to look at the, the two schools, like the Notre Dame and whoever we're playing. Those are the flags to look at because the kickoffs can go higher than a field goal, and those are the highest flags in the stadium. And they're also kind of outside the stadium. So they give a little bit better of a read, in my opinion. Um, field goals is difficult because the wind does swirl in there. I tend to look at the American flag sometimes when I'm kicking towards the scoreboard. Um, other times I try to look at the, at the goal post. It's aligned with the hash that I'm on. Um, but really, I, you know, Guys, I know that come play here, they ask me about the wind, and I really don't have a great answer. You know, I've been here for five years, and you know, I just, I, you know, the wind does what it does. There's no really rhyme or reason. It just kind of swirls. It can be going one way, you know, one minute, and you can go in another direction next. So, it really, you know, in those situations, you've got to focus on hitting a really solid ball, and whatever happens, happens. All right, we're gonna go to Chris Heidel. You can go right ahead. All right, I think he's all set. You're good, John. Uh, good. Yep, you're good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Mike, what's up, man? How we doing? Good. How are you? Good. Same setup. We'll do questions in the room first. We've got time to do questions with Zoom. You ready to go? Ready. All right. Room God. I mean. It shows a lot. We had uh, built a ton of chemistry through the summer and obviously 18 days of camp. Um, we built a ton, a ton of chemistry. I just think um, through the chemistry that we built, we built a lot of trust with each other. And um, I think that trust is going to take us through the entire season. And I think we're going to keep having games like this for sure. At the same time, there were some untimely drops in the extra game. How do you keep that up to make sure that that's not 
I go back, watch the film, see what I did. I know, I know what I did on both the drops. Um, you know, first game of the season, pretty eager. Um, kind of got a little eager and, and, and took my eye off the ball before it kind of hit my hands. And, and so that, that led to the drops. But um, it's going to happen. I'm human. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at moving off and things like that. So i um, looking forward to Toledo now and, and what I can do against them. How would you kind of rate your blocking process? Are you kind of getting a little nasty after a few plays? Feel like there. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, last year we had Tommy and Brock that both blocked pretty well, and I learned a lot from both of them. And I feel like now I'm kind of taking over as, as a big blocker in the offense. And I feel like that was one of my big improvements this summer and through camp was um, working on my blocking. And I feel like against Florida State, I blocked pretty well. Um, and um, I'm just going to keep improving on that. On that fourth and one first quarter touchdown, you wide open. What did you see as soon as you kind of left one? I saw there was a corner. I knew Kyle was going to come out to the flat. And um, I, I knew as soon as the play started, um, it was a broken coverage. And uh, I turned my head, and Jack already had the ball in the air, and I knew it was going to be a touchdown. I'm expecting some rowdy fans. I'm expecting um, I'm a packed stadium for sure, and um, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be nice to not have um, – 80,000 people yelling in your ear on third and three, so. Any more questions? All right, man, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we're doing a little bit of a hybrid here, so we're going to have questions from the reporters in the room first, and then we'll finish with questions. So, Sounds you good. Ready to go? Yep. All right, we're going to go ahead. JD, my name's Lynn Clark. I cover uh, Notre Dame for WCFM in Ireland. Gotcha. <laughs> Just the connections with Ireland, they've adopted you. Because <laughs> your dad played rugby. Yes, sir. What did you learn growing up from your dad uh, from rugby that you translated to school? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just like hard work. And so he's definitely instilled that. And like, obviously, it's cool just being able to, like, I've gone back to Ireland to see his story and see people being just like, not fans of him, but know his name in a sense. And so there, but then even just like in the working life, like he is always working, never sitting down. So just being able to see that aspect of him. Is it kid you because he didn't use pads? I know. Um, <laughs> somewhat, I mean, not as much. He's the most encouraging, supportive person that I know. So like, he's just there for me throughout the process. And finally, you had a career game on Sunday night. Just tell us about the environment and why you had a nose for the ball most of the night. Um, I mean, it's just an awesome environment. Going in, we knew it was going to be a great environment. The coaches did a great job preparing us, whether it was playing FSU's theme song during the practices or anything like that. And so just through the coaches' preparation, like, it was just go out there and felt pretty comfortable being able to make some plays. Judy, did the amount of team for some of the first day play? Um. Not so much. I mean, I think we just need to make sure we execute better. But beyond that, I mean, I think we're going to be ready for Toledo and be able to move forward from there. Um, I mean, honestly, it's just Coach Elson does a great job just scheming that up, planning that up. And he does a great job just teaching us the technique to be successful on the field. And I mean, it showed. So appreciate it, Coach Elson. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think just it's always exciting just getting the atmosphere and the fans and campus, the vibe being able to start going and moving. And so obviously that's exciting. But then also just getting, I mean, the awesome thing about college football is you get another opportunity each week. And so just being able to get another opportunity as a team, just being able to go out there and play better than we played last week. Um, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's, for me, it's just the same preparation as always. And I mean, it's been great to be able to see like someone like Prince Colley do well during practice. And so just being able to prepare for my own confidence, but also knowing that at the linebacker spot, we have great depth. What do you expect to see from Um, I mean, I think they're a lot like we know they're a lot better team than what people give them credit for. And so. From there, we just got to make sure that we're preparing the same way, and if not, need to continue to prepare better than we've always prepared. So, any more questions in the room? 
All right, we have one question on Zoom. Darren Pritchett, you can go right ahead. JD, I know last year Coach Polin and Coach Kelly mentioned your name for what you did on special teams. Kind of a two-part question. Number one, being a special teams player, how important was that and how much did that prepare you for the opportunities you got at the linebacker position this spring and this fall? Yes, sir. Um, I think the biggest thing about special teams is like, one, it's great to be able to open the game with just like getting that first hit in, but two, you should be able to get that opportunity to one, help the team and two, like just be able to have the chance to like go out there with the same guys, different guys. And just, I think it's a really good team builder and point where you should get the opportunity to play. All right, thanks, J.D. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it.